Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmay here, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be understanding the fundamental concept of operators in JavaScript. So, in the previous couple of videos of this entire JavaScript playlist, we've seen what are comments, what are statements. We also saw what are variables. And if you've missed those videos, you can check it out in this playlist. So, coming to the today's topic, that is operators in JavaScript. So, since this is a very beginner level tutorial, we're going to be taking a little bit of theory, and then we'll jump to the practical part. That is, we'll see also a program wherein we'll be using these operators. So, starting off. JavaScript operators are symbols which are used to assign values, compare values, perform arithmetic operations, and more. So essentially, these are symbols. Okay, symbols means plus, minus, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, and what not. Now the variables are called as operands, and the operation to be performed is defined by an operator. So in terms of a program, it would be something like let's say we create a variable var a, and we say equal to ten. So this equal to is basically an operator. It is an assignment operator. And what it is doing is it is assigning this value ten, and it is storing it in this variable, right? So this is that assignment operator. For example, of course we'll see a lot of program examples in some time after this little bit of theory. So now there are different types of operators in JavaScript depending upon what activities or what functionality they provide us. So we have arithmetic operators, we have comparison operators, we have logical operators, and as the name suggests, arithmetic operators perform arithmetic operations. That is plus, minus, multiplication, division, modulo, and whatnot. Similarly, comparison operators, as the name suggests, is used to perform comparisons between two variables or two entities. Then we have logical operators, which use these comparison operators to give certain results, either true or false. Then we have assignment operators. We saw one equal to operator, which is a type of assignment operator. Then we have conditional operators, which are used to check for conditions. We have string operators. We have type operators and bitwise operators. So obviously we are not going to be taking a look at each and every operator in detail in the practical part because that doesn't make sense. And in the further videos as we move ahead in this series, we are anyways going to be covering a lot of operators depending upon the program and depending upon the need. So yes, this was just a little bit of theory on what are operators in JavaScript and the different types of operators. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glance through each and every operator type and I'll just show you the different operators and the meaning and what they do. And what you can do is you can pause the screen if you just want to note them, or if you just want to go through them, you can just take a screenshot. So we'll go one by one, starting off from the arithmetic operator till the bitwise operator. Okay, so these are the arithmetic operators available in JavaScript. We have plus, minus, multiplication is a star. Then we have division, modulus, increment, and decrement. Okay, so these are used to perform arithmetic operations. Let's move ahead. Okay, so these are the comparison operators. That is, comparison and logical operators are used to test for true or false. Okay, so you want to test a condition, you use comparison operators. So again, we have the operator, we have the description, what it is called, and we have different examples. You can just pause the video and glance through them. And as I mentioned, as we move ahead in the series, we're going to be using a lot of operators. So don't worry if I'm skipping or moving a little bit fast over here. So let's move ahead. So these are the logical operators which are used in comparison. And again, they are used to test for true and false values. So we generally use them in if else and all those control statements, which we will see in further videos. So again, these are the three operators: the description, that is, and, or, and not, and then a little bit of example. You don't need to be worrying about all these. We are obviously going to take a look at them in detail in further videos. The next is assignment operator, which is used to assign values to JavaScript variables or other entities. So we have equal to, we have plus equal to, we have minus equal to, and then there are examples and what they actually mean. Moving ahead. We have a conditional operator which has three different parts. That's why a ternary operator. So this is how it looks like. We have a variable name. We have the condition, and depending upon if the condition is true, value one will be assigned, and if it is false, then value two will be assigned. So for example, we have a variable var votable, and then we are saying is age less than eighteen. If it is less than eighteen, then it will be too young, and if it is not less than eighteen, then it will be old enough. So this is how it looks. We'll use this in the program in further videos. Don't worry. So the plus operator also operates as a string operator, which means that we can use it with strings. So just as plus operator is used to add to numeric values, we can concatenate to text values using the plus operator. Okay. So for example, you can see var text one, var text two, and we are seeing text one plus a little bit of space in between and plus text two. So this is the output John Doe, which comes from two different variables concatenated in text three. Then we have type operator, which is used to determine the type of data being stored in a variable or an object. So depending upon whether it is variable, we use type of, and if it's an object, we use instance of. So if a variable is holding a numeric value, that is a number value, it will return 
a numeric output okay so we'll use this type of an instance of also in further videos and lastly we have the bitwise operators which work on 32 bit numbers and any numeric operand in the operation is converted into a 32 bit number and the result is converted back into javascript number okay so for example we have and or not xor so these are all boolean operators which perform boolean operations so for example you can see phi and 1 first is going to be converted into its binary form so phi is 0 and 0 and then we have the and operator and we have 3 times 0 and 1 and then we perform an and operation between them so it's a logical and operation which is a boolean operation and then we get the result which we convert back to decimal form so these operators are not used a lot and they're only used in certain specific cases especially if you are designing a circuit which is a digital circuit wherein we are performing some boolean algebraic operations but they're not highly used a lot in general scenarios so yeah this was a little bit of theory now let's jump to the programming part and we'll see a couple of examples of operators and we'll understand a concept of operator precedence and operator associativity okay so as you can see on the screen i have opened up my visual studio code and on the right hand side we have our google chrome opened and i'm also live so you can see i've used a live server plugin to go live so whatever changes i make over here so let's see if i change the value of this variable to 3 the result will be immediately reflected without me refreshing it because i've also turned on the auto save feature of visual studio so anyways as you can see on the screen we are performing a little bit of addition over here so i have variable 1 I have created variable b and then what I'm saying is where result is equal to a plus b and lastly what I'm doing is I'm just printing out this result in a h1 tag and I'm saying result is then I'm using the plus operator so again you can see I'm using an operator to concatenate the result and here I'm using the plus operator to perform addition okay so the plus operator is doing two different things when it is strings it is performing concatenation and when it is numbers it is performing addition so now one thing I wanted to talk about is associativity now certain operators have a right to left associativity and certain operators have left to right associativity. So what do I mean by this? So when I say right to left associativity, so in this first case, what is happening is the number three is being assigned to variable A, right? So what is happening is RHS that is right hand side to the equal to sign is being assigned to LHS that is this variable A. So this is why it is right to left. Okay. So when you're using this equal to sign, it is a right to left associativity. Let's take another example. So let's say I'm again creating one more variable. I'm saying where C is equal to six. Okay. Now in the result, what I'm going to say is a plus B plus C. Now the result again has changed. You can see six plus three plus three. So when you're using plus sign, the associativity is from left to right, which means what is happening is first A and B are added. Then the result of A and B is added with C and then the assignment is happening that is the whole total of A plus B plus C is being assigned to the result variable because equal to sign has right to left associativity right now you're wondering why is this relevant now from the previous video we know that JavaScript is loosely typed or weakly typed programming language right which means that we don't have to declare any kind of data type of the variables so whatever the data is assigned by default the data type is changed so now what I can do over here is if I add a string over here and I add a plus sign over here, even this is valid since the associativity of plus sign is from left to right. So it will start from left and it will see that, okay, the first thing to add is a string. So it will assume that everything ahead of this is also a string. So if you see the result is a three, three. So what it did is it took a as a string. Let me just change this to something else. I'll say Tanmay. Now you can see what is happening is we are getting a result of Tanmay three, three, which means that this variable a and b did not get added and we did not get a total of six because as i mentioned since the associativity is from left to right all the things are converted to string now so if i change this to eight you can see the result is three eight so they are all concatenated because plus operator operates as a concatenation between strings right now again i'm going to change this same thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to add something over here i'm going to say c plus b and plus tanmay but now you can see that the result is 14 tanmay 38 so c is 6 b is 8 which means that initially we got the total right so this was considered as a number because the associativity of plus is from left to right so it started from left so it says okay c is a number b is a number let's add it this was added we got a result of 14 now when it came over here that is the program execution came over here it saw this as a string so it's like okay 
since this is a string, let's concatenate with the result. So 14 was concatenated with Tanmay and everything ahead of this was considered as a string. So it was also concatenated. So A was 3 and B was 8 which was considered as a string and concatenated and the result was stored in the result variable. So this was something which is known as associativity. Now there is one more thing which is known as precedence and the precedence applies different to different operators. Again, I have a complete article wherein we have operator precedence and we have associativity and we have all the program examples. I'll link that article in the description. You can check it out if you want to check out the theory. There's a lot of content in there. But the basic precedence principle is which operator should perform operation first over the next. Okay. So we can have multiple operations in one single line also, right? So you can see where result 2 is equal to a plus b and now you can say star c. So what I'm doing over here is I'm also performing addition and multiplication. So when there are two different operations in one single expression, which operator should operate first depends on the operator precedence because obviously that is going to be changing the value, right? So if I say a plus b, which happens first, that is 8 plus 3, which would be 11 and then 11 into 3 would be 33, right? However, if I multiply b star c first, so b is 8 and c is 6. So 8 6 that would be 48 and 48 plus 3 would be so the output is different right in different cases so that's why precedence matters so in that theory article which i just told which i've shared in the description you can check out the precedence values and in general the arithmetic operators follow our board mass rule which we use in our algebra also that is the multiplication happens first before addition and so on and so forth but i can change that using brackets okay so if i say brackets over here and if i print the result 2 you can see result is 66 however if i remove the brackets the result would be 51. That is the result is changed. So this was operator precedence. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. I'm going to wrap it over here because then if I go ahead and we'll talk more on operators, this video will go a lot lengthy. And as I mentioned, as we move ahead, we'll cover different types of operators in different programs wherein we'll take a look at a lot of practical programs. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you like this video. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know how this video was in the comments. And if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So thanks for watching guys. See you guys in the next video. Peace.